Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start this analysis by asking our elders in this channel that maybe you need to share with us your experience with the colonial chiefs. If you have the privilege, I, I realized that in this channel we have, I think, over 20% people watch above for five years. So you can share with us your experience about the colonial chiefs. I'll, I want to look at the comment section and be sampling some. Of course, I'll, read the, I'll review them in some other analysis. In TSCS Keture Kindiki, a seasoned lawyer made a public made public a policy that they are working on to integrate the national government administrative officers now, the chiefs, with the national police service. I've said that. What it entails is to arm the chiefs, or give the chiefs a gun, and also attach five police officers under to work under the chiefs. <laughs> uh, but I don't know that they are also supposed to be given guns. Um, maybe someone can also help us confirm there. But what I understand is true is that five chiefs are going to work under them. So that is not, I, I have, I've listened to what Mudama is saying that it's the same as what is happening now. What is happening now, I, th I think we need to draw the difference because now the police, there is no police that is working under chief. It's just that chief must have a very good working relationship with the nearest police, police station so that they can use, of course, always work together on some criminal, <clears throat> on some criminal um, offenses, especially at the local, at the local, at the location level. This has sparked a debate in this country, and we are asking what was the rationale that was used even to arrive to such a sensitive security matter. And it just came out, and you know, you just make it. I have seen different commentators responding to it. And uh, those who had the luxury of being alive here during the pre-colonial days uh, are really having chilling testimonies or uh, chilling revelations of how they suffered at the hands of the powerful chief then. I remember the list. Uh, a chief, Kitambo, would come to your home now. Uh, the youth, they used to have some, let me say, some very rogue gentlemen <laughs> around them. And these youth people would come to your place, come how could leave a kid to say that they are like if you take a load from government you've not paid for for, for example where's the fellow? So they would come and take kuku na kila kitu. They were very far powerful people, I remember. And so in the 2010 framers of 2010 constitution um, uh, reduced the powers of the chief so that they would have the civilized police to run uh, to in charge of a bit of the larger security. So this, according to what, what is the burden it creates, we have 6,000 chiefs in this country. And if we are supposed now to arm all of them, give them five police, at least five, according to Waziri, then we are going to add 30,000 to them. When Waziri spoke about it, it, it sounded like as if it's something that is being thought about but what I realize is that he was just trying to make public that policy so that they can open the discussion. We are working towards uh, reorganizing ourselves between the GAO officers and the police to ensure, as it was before, that every chief has police officers attached to them to enable them uh, be able to enforce law and order. At the moment, all the police are at the police station and uh, we are working with uh, between the police and uh, the Ngao uh, to make sure that uh, we harmonize that. I am therefore directing the State Department for Interior to work towards a process of enabling every chief to have security at their disposal to enhance security at uh, chiefs' offices, but also to assist chiefs 
in enforcing law and order. The decision will be made, but uh, at the moment we believe that a chief should have at least five police officers so that at every given time he has at his disposal, um, you know, uh, a few officers who can, who can assist him in uh, enforcing the law. But uh, uh, five is a good number for a start. We are so that was Kituri Kindiki in Mombasa. Um, when um, I think that was in Kilifi, if I'm not wrong. And if you listen to it, he's actually acknowledging that this is a departure from what the 2010 constitution envisioned. This is uh, what I think we need to talk about. This is what everyone else is seeing. I personally appreciate, and of course, the people of Kenya appreciate that such... Um, it is in conformity with the bottom up. <laughs> Don't I think now there is bottom up governance model. <laughs> this is not bottom up economic model. It is also governance model. It is in conformity and it is in order to galvanize security mechanisms at the locational level. But this can also be very dangerous and it also risks risks creating an abusive and extortion enterprise at the chief's camp, a place that our parents now regard as a mediation center. In fact, if you want to enhance the chief's camp, you don't take the gun there. If if I'm lying, then try, try to go, go just attend one baraza. You see the way people are very free, and when people are even articulating at barazas, that's where chiefs collect a lot of briefs of things happening at the, the society. So the wazes that are going there, the cases that are being mediated, in fact, the chief's camp is a, was, was, was a, is a community center, if you ask me. It's a community center. And when you take a gun in that chief's camp, or you take a policeman there, I am telling you that people are going to develop some phobia. And they may never report because someone will always believe that if I am taken to chief's camp, I'm going to be arrested there. You know, at chief's camp you can go, you solve your issues and come back. So now if you take a gun there, there is going to be a phobia. So the intervention that is seen as solving the security at that level, government is going to be deprived of what would have been a very good, what was a very good environment for them to, people to speak. And the chief's baraza are no longer going to be conducive as they are now. I'm just trying to use a very simple um, analogy that we have been looking at. The other thing is this. You know, Chiefs Camp is a center of mediation and a community-sensitive problem-solving environment. It's not a place to arrest and someone to It's not what it is as of now. Saini Mali and and you've seen you've seen CDF money building Chiefs Camp, and they have very important aspects they're putting up there. So, which way? Because provincial administration is under the office of the president. There is, they, they, uh, they are actually answerable to the county commissioner. So the assistant chief, the chief, I think the DC was removed and the PC, but then they introduced the county commissioners and the assistant county commissioners. So on that line to the office of the president, wow, do you match your rice for ground? Then police is under national police service, which is envisioned the constitution to be an independent body. They're not supposed to receive orders from anyone, not even the president. So NPS is led by uh, the inspector general of police, uh, the competent Jafet Komi. So we have two people that are getting commands from different centers. Which way? So if you integrate the president, uh, William Ruto, was on record saying that we don't want a police force that is under the executive. But the chief is under the office of the president. 
And now, which one? Which way? <laughs> uh, we need to look at it. And what I, I, I support what Topionda is saying, that such a sensitive matter, number one, it needs to be anchored on law. And because it needs to be anchored on law, it's not just a matter of waking up and coming up with a, 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 a policy and you change what was in the constitution because what we're simply seeing is a simplistic way of getting things to a way to be done. You know, I, I listened to when yesterday Raina was responding to William Ruto on the Cherera 4 and they said something there that they are laid down structures of doing things not just the jungle way. President Ruto has good ambitions for this country. The interventions, the ambitions might look very good. And you may understand the intentions, like they were the Hustler Fund and so. But if they're not well, if the food is not well cooked, then you doubt it. You doubt it's poisoned. That's that's the point. The chiefs, I mean the chiefs are giving them police might be a very good idea. But if it is not communicated well to the people so that they are internalized, they own it becomes a, uh, like a community policy thing, then it won't help the people. If it is for us, it must be with us. We must be at the table. I, I think that is what um, people need to look at. Because my only point is this. What are the safeguards entrenched in law to avoid abuse of power as was the case in the pre-colonial days? But Chief was a powerful man, Yamani. Na ile time hakuwa na buduki. Alikuwa tuna vijana na karungu. And he would punish you. He would really punish you. So what are the safeguards? What are the protocols? Of, of course, it's too early because maybe Waziri is working with the other departments to come up with it. But I agree that this should be subjected to public participation. I don't know what, what, what it takes, what's difficult, because from cabinet, you can simply uh, come up with the policy, give it, take it to parliament, let it be, let, let them attract, do public participation, let it be anchored on, let it be anchored on law. Let's go through the process, it be anchored on law. There is no problem with that. However, the constitutional lawyers are arguing that the 2010 constitution has never been implemented fully and not even 60%. So Kenya has not uh, uh, really enjoyed the, the full fruits, the mature fruits of the 2010 constitution. And if there are things that were there and we are now changing them without even now implementing them, what do we mean? If we want a referendum to change the constitution, why don't we just call a public referendum and change the constitution? Because what I see here, as much as there is rule, rule of law, but we are not implementing that constitution. We are going to it, plucking some few sentences, looking, this is not, we want to do, to do this way, you change it. Change it. So it means what the framers of 1010 constitution envisioned has never been seen. Why is government looking at the, not looking at the public goodwill? It's not simple as just saying, I'm going to give, uh, attach five police officers to the chief. No. I think it should, the goodwill, should be equally important. Today I've also listened to ooh, is it Aisha Jum was saying that his lifted discomatanga in Kilif. <laughs> the, the lifted discomatanga thing came at the height of COVID-19. I don't know whether he was just saying Kilifi and what his his jurisdiction of not her. Of course CS cannot speak in Kilifi. He was just she was just speaking in Kilifi but she meant that government has lifted Discomatanga. That's that what she meant. I think uh, has lifted the ban on Disco Matanga. So, okay, who is supposed to make that announcement? <laughs> I thought Kendiki should make that um, announcement. Now, who is pulling vigilance at the community level for some two reasons? Implementation of government policies and projects. You know, and, and this is going to work. If you have a powerful chief there with the police, now, whether there is a hustler fund in Unambiwa Sipa Sayabure, and you take it, do you think people will fear not taking even that hustler fund? Because maybe chief at it will be very easy for government to enforce. 
defaulters, uh, go after defaulters. With such arrangement, it's very easy for them to go after defaulters. You just need to go for some two or three defaulters. It's enough in a village. Two or three, then no one is going to take that money with an intention not to pay. Maybe it is going to work. It was a scare tactic that was used by then Moi days. So those who are planning to do, just take it from government and cross government way, the chief is not just to maintain order. It's also to enforce and implement and advocate for government policy. This is, this is something that is it. Lastly, I also see that with the current uh, environment, um, they have also realized that while a team are announcing they are going to the streets, to keep people to the streets, and of course there could be internal rebellion that will be building, and this rebellion could build because of unmet promises, being that the 2020, 2022 campaigns was mostly anchored on the youth and the emotions of the youth were really um, wiped, uh, hyped. And because of that, there, there'll be of, a bit of unrest even at the locational level. And they will be doing this to contain that at the locational level. Uh, it's just my speculation. And of course, we agree this is coming at a point where this country have had challenges of uh, insecurity in different parts of the country. But even though we are solving a national problem, but we should also involve others. We should just embrace public participation. That's my take. It's a good idea, but not well packaged. It needs to be well packaged and defended to the public so that the public can own it. And yes, it goes. What's your experience with the senior chief? Others are called senior chief. That is the end of our podcast. <laughs>